Good morning, everybody. Today is December 3rd. This is your best effing dad here, Dr. Vaughn, bariatric surgeon. Uh, quick COVID update for you. I will tell you, I had my booster shot Tuesday evening, and I was down Wednesday and Thursday, so really about 36 hours. This booster hit me worse than my second, my second shot of Moderna. And for Erica, um, she did better with the booster than the uh, second shot. She was much sicker with the second shot. So, but we're better. I'm, I'm good now. Feeling protected. What I want to do is just quickly give you an update about Omicron, which everyone's talking about freaking out. Now, as I said, you know, it was already the United States. It was just a matter of time before we uh, reported it, which they have since reported it. First in San Francisco, then five cases in New York City. And then yesterday, Minnesota and Colorado, and there will be more states announcing it. So the interesting one, though, is um, the guy, was it Colorado? Who Anyway, the one that went to the New York City and caught it at the anime uh, conference. So there's like 55,000 people at that conference. You know there's going to be more cases. And that might end up being like the epicenter of the Omicron case there in New York City. As a reminder, New York has not had a uh, Delta surge, so this could be it for them. I'm just watching it very closely. New York City, New Jersey, and then uh, Illinois, Chicago, you know, number cities number one and number three in, time, in terms of population. Uh, as always, the numbers are really screwed up this last week because of Thanksgiving holidays, but for the last two days, we the United States has recorded reported more than 130,000 cases each day. So we are literally heading the wrong direction. Uh, we are probably realistically in the 150,000 cases a day range. And I want to talk about cases here in a second, but um, what am, what's happening with Omicron? I'm going to get a little controversial um, and I've been doing some reading on this. You know, I, I said in a previous video that the world's gonna shut down, which they have. Omicron, by the way, is now in 24 countries. All right, so it is out there. And I said that when it first came out, I was like, boy, it's already in the Netherlands. There's a plane of 500 and, you know, 90 people and 63 of them came down with COVID and they let all the other passengers go on their way. And I was like, it's already out there, but the world's gonna shut down. So that's what they did. Now, right or wrong, I really don't think you need to shut down uh, flights from South Africa and, uh, you know, African countries because it's already out. The horses are out of the barn. But whatever governments decide to do, they're going to get criticized. If, if the U.S. did not shut down, if not, if they did not shut down flights from South Africa, they get criticized. If they did, they're getting criticized. So either way, you know, I don't get into the politics side of it, but it really does not make any sense since we know it's already out there now. A lot's being made about the mutations, which are now up to 34 mutations on the Omicron versus eight on Delta. And remember, before last week, Delta had become 99.6% of the cases worldwide. And the same thing here in the United States, 99% of the cases in the United States were Delta. So Delta has a competitive advantage over all the other variants, really became dominant. And they're still debating whether or not it's more virulent, sicker, etc. Uh, and I don't, you know, that's fine. But I predicted Omicron would take over for Delta and people are freaking out. But, you know, what's happened in the last week, the um, Omicron variant in South Africa, three days, two days ago, was 67% of the cases. So two days ago, Omicron took over Delta in South Africa. South Africa. And now, today, it's 75% of all the cases in South Africa. So basically, in one month's time, less than a month, three and a half weeks' time, Omicron has taken over Delta in South Africa, 75% of the cases, which tells me it has a competitive advantage. You can't say that that's for sure, but it seems to be indicative. And I can't say that it's more communicative or, you know, uh, but but likely it's just likely you know um so now some people are saying well why are, why should we freak out because the cases seem to be milder well they're milder now in south africa but we're not really sure if that will hold you know there were questions about 
alpha, beta, the UK, you know, the different variants, like maybe initially they were also milder. We were uh, hopeful that they were, and then now we have Delta, and we know what happened, you know. 780,000 Americans dead, five, you know, five and a half million people worldwide dead. And um, so it's just too early to tell. Now, why is it too early to tell? Well, it could be a population. So maybe Omicron spread in a population of younger people. Uh, the first patient, I think, was somewhere around the early 30s. So, and we already know that younger population um, generally, as a general rule, do better with COVID than the elderly population. That's a given. So it could be just a population of sampling error. So it's too early to say that Omicron is milder symptoms. That's number one, uh, because it could be younger, it could be population. Number two, it could also be the effects of the vaccine, which is what we want. <laughs> see, naysayers and negative people and anti-vaxxers will say, see, it's the vaccinated that are getting sick, that are catching the virus. Uh, no, it's the vaccinated that are surviving it, you know. Nothing about being vaccinated, again, I will say this again, nothing about vaccinated prevents the virus from landing in your schnoz, man. Like nothing keeps it from here. And the vaccine helps your body build a response quicker so that you don't get sick. And if you are contagious, you will be less contagious for, for a shorter period of time than if you're unvaccinated. That's just how this works. But, you know, people who just don't want to believe in science or want to be deniers or just just big babies, you can't tell me what to do, will try to spin it out of, the, out of the way. Which takes me to my last point, which is, you know, cases are going to go up. But unlike last year, listen to me, this is important. Unlike last year, this time last year, remember around the Christmas holidays, the vaccines were starting to come out and... Um, the first doses were being given to healthcare workers and people in nursing homes, right? And it was two doses. So then January, they were getting their second dose. Two weeks, two, three weeks after that, you're talking about end of January, beginning of February, you're fully quote unquote vaccinated. But around this time period, they were just starting to roll out the vaccines, right? Unlike last year, this year, we have vaccinations. And Thank God we do. We've got, you know, depending on how you read the data, anywhere from 60 to 70% of Americans are vaccinated, eligible Americans. And so that's going to paint a very different picture. So Omicron, you're going to see the surge in cases, but hopefully a much smaller rise in hospitalizations and deaths, which means the vaccines are working. But the people more likely to become hospitalized and more likely to die from Omicron will be the unvaccinated. So no, it does not mean that vaccinated people won't be in the hospitals or, un, or I mean, say, sorry, vaccinated people won't be in the hospitals. It does not mean that vaccinated pe people won't die from the virus. It's just much less likely. So the only real number that really matters is how many hospitalizations and deaths we'll have, which I predict even though the case numbers are high, the number of deaths and hospitalizations will be lower than last year because we have vaccinations, which proves that vaccines are working. Now, I'll do a few more videos coming up this weekend because I want to discuss this about do you need um, a Omicron specific booster or vaccine? I don't think you do. I think our body's smart enough to uh, form multiple um, uh, forms of antibodies, neutralizing antibodies to cover pretty much any uh, variant. And also, the 32 mutations in the spike protein of uh, Omicron, just remember this, there's not an infinite number of mutations. And by that I mean, if if the spike, remember the spike protein is what um, the coronavirus uses to bind to your ACE2 receptor on your cells, your primarily your lung cells in this case, but you have ACE2 receptors on other cells, but you know, for, we'll, we'll just say your lung cells. If that spike protein changes too much, 
then the virus will no longer be able to use your ACE2 receptor because it will just not even form. It won't even lock. So in which case the coronavirus will no longer proliferate. It will die, die out for lack of a better phrase, right? So there's not an infinite, like, oh my God. Because so people sit there and go, oh, it's just going to be more and more variants. Just blah, 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 blah. Okay. So just calm the fuck down. Just calm down, right? It's not forever. It's not going to be, there is a limit to how many mutations you can have. And as long as we can just social distance, wear your face mask, get vaccinated, we will ride this out. Last thing I'll say, the last, last thing I'll say before I go is this. The only reason why we know about alpha, beta, gamma, delta, blah, 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 now Omicron, the only reason why we know about these variants is the fact that we have technology that does genetic sequencing. So you probably have read back in the Spanish flu of 2017, 18, 19, there were like three waves, right? Like a, a big wave in the, the first wave, second wave was huge, the third wave was smaller. Now, if they had had genetic sequencing back then, there's a very good chance those were probably three different variants. There were probably multiple variants back then. We just didn't have genetic sequencing. And imagine if we had gone through this coronavirus pandemic and we did not have genetic sequencing, all we would be doing is talking about, oh, here comes a surge, here's the first surge, here's the second surge, here's the third surge, without tying into this whole variant kind of like craziness, right? So it's just the fact that we have access to the technology to do the sequencing. It will not change the outcome. It will not change what you need to do. It does not change the need, the fact that, that vaccination is the way through this, masks are the way through this. Just be a little bit more patient. I can talk more about that in later videos, all right? Hopefully that'll be helpful. Uh, I'll do some more videos this weekend, so stay tuned. November, November, gosh, December. No shave, November's over. Give it up for Dr. V's beard. I, <laughs> I gotta go shave this. And um, oh man, my booster really whew, put me down. But I'm gonna go shave today. See you next time. Bye.